Okay, so what I'm going to be doing here is doing a little bit of an update on uh, this modeling process because uh, we're in Max 2021 and so um, the tools have changed a little bit and it kind of confuses uh, students. For example, on this piece right here, we're going to go ahead and convert this to a poly and then we're going to grab these edges and then we're going to do a chamfer. Now, um, Max defaults now to have to put an extra edge in here. So if I come in here and start giving it some depth, there's an extra edge in there. And uh, that was not in the original vi uh, video, which you have to come back to right here. And this should be set to zero. And now this is going to chamfer like um, the original video I did. So this is throwing people off because they don't think to come in here and actually do any changes to get the look of what I actually had. They're leaving on this new default of one, which is rounding this edge. And I don't want the edge to be rounded. I want it to be very angular. So it's like the rest of this. So that's the first issue. Okay, so be sure you're wary of the, the new controls that are in the uh, new chamfer modifier. Okay, and then of course then you can follow, uh, then it can be booleaned in here. Now, on uh, the spline, and I'm going to, I'm going to bake that down. I'm going to right click on this and collapse this to an editable spline. So I'm doing collapse too. I'm not collapsing the bevel in. I'm just collapsing this edit spline and the circle together. And then I get into my interpolation. Okay, now this is my show end results. I'm doing that so I can see the bevel at the top, but I can be down below. Now, I, in the original video, I talked about adaptive. Okay, and we can set steps. So I think what I'm going to eventually have us doing is baking this, uh, baking a normal map for this. So we're going to treat this kind of like uh, it's going into a game. And so we're going to decide how many polygons we want on this. So we're going to see some faceting like this, okay, which is fine because we're going to do a high poly and bake out of there. So I think uh, six steps will be fine for this. So we'll bake it with that. And then we'll go ahead and do a Boolean from there. And I'm just going to hold down my shift key and make a copy of this. So in case I want to come back to it later. Okay. So this is my original. And we'll just hide that. Okay. So we're going to go to compound objects. And used to pro boolean, boolean Max's booleans forever sucked. That's a technical term. It sucked. Uh, so there was a, a company that made one called Pro Boolean, which was not Autodesk. It was a third party developer that developed it, and it was much better. And so Autodesk bought it, and then they put it in here, and that's what we've been using for many years. But now Autodesk has gone back and rewritten their Boolean from the ground up, and it's much better. And it's much better than the Pro Boolean. So it doesn't have the cool name, Pro Boolean, but it's, you know, it's a better Boolean now. So we're going to use it. So we go in here, and then the way this works is you add things into it that you want to do. Boolean is a um, modifier that either uh, uses two things to cut each other or it merges them together according to what you're doing. So it defaults to union, which is fine. So I'm coming here, and I want to union these two. So I click Add, Operands, and I click this, and now it's it's made that as one thing, okay? Now what it's done is it's actually cut this. So if I do Alt-X, there's no extra geometry in there, okay? So if I'm going to go back, we'll Alt-X this and Alt-X this. And turn this off for a second. Okay, so you can see these two are interpenetrating each other. So when I come in here and do this Boolean, 
now it's cut them so that they're all in together. So it's one thing. And then I'm going to do the opposite on this one. I'm going to do a subtraction, which it means it's going to use this as a cutting tool. Oops. Sorry. All right. I'm going to pick this one, but I want that one to be a subtraction. So it's actually cutting into that. So I'm using Alt-X, which is X-Ray, which allows me to see into it. Alt-X. And But the other thing that's nice about this Boolean command is I actually can come in here and adjust these if I want to. Okay, so right up here you'll see there's a little uh, arrow by this Boolean. I can go in here and click Operands, and now it's going to actually, actually allow me to pick uh, Operands and move them. So like this one. And if and the thing about it is I can't really see them if I go move. I can't I can grab this and move it and it's actually moving that box. I can't see it being moved, but it is moving it. Okay. If I go over here on my stack and I click operands, then it allows me to see them. And so I can come in and go, okay, I want to move this deeper in, or maybe I, you know, so I can adjust it so when it cuts it in there, it's still holding that information. I can go back to this one. So they can all be adjusted after the fact. Because it's still a Boolean operation. Now at some point, and we're going to go back to end result, then we're going to bake it into being an editable poly. But right now, it can still be adjusted. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on this. I'm going to uh, clone this one, okay, as a copy. And this is going to be my Surface Widget, and this is my Boolean. One of the things you want to get in the habit of doing is always giving yourself an out, a way to go back in time if I don't like something. So by making these copies, then if the art director comes back in and goes, you know, I really want this moved a little to the right, then it's easy for me to do that. Because right now, I'm going to convert this to an edible poly. And now these are permanently in there. Okay. So really at this point, this one is done. And I'm going to rename this one. This is Surface Widget, and this is Low Poly. Okay, and let's see how many polygons are in this. So right up here where you have these little, uh, this text up here, if you see the little plus button, if you right-click on that and you go to Configure Viewports, we want to go over here to this uh, Statistics tab, and we want this one that says Total and Selection, we want polygon count, we want triangle count, we want vertex count. We don't need frames per second because we're not animating. And click OK. Now, when you hit 7 on the keyboard, that's going to bring up a counter in here. Now, the way this works is the left is how many is in the total scene, and the right is in the object I select. So this object right now has 772 polygons in it, or triangles in it. Now, a polygon is a quad, so in other words, you know, triangles in the end, and a lot of people don't quite get this, is everything is triangles. So if I go to edges right here and I go uh, edit triangles, then you'll see all of the triangles that are in this piece. So these are all the triangles that are necessary to construct this piece. Now, that's the least amount of polygons that I need to construct this piece, but because of the nature of uh, the way shading works, I may decide that I want to put some extra polygons in this. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to I'm going to slice this a couple places because the way lighting works and a lot of people don't get this, and I'll show you an example. 
and we're going to go in here and put an edit normals modifier on this and I don't need those that long let's get them like smaller the way you need to think of this is when light hits the surface that's those little blue lines are light beams it's, cut, it's not exactly true but that's the way you think of it is they're like light beams so that vertex right there has a uh, light beam hitting it from all the angles okay so it's got one coming in from here 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 so these all have light beams hitting them so light really doesn't hit the surface you know we as human beings go we know okay light hits the surface but it doesn't and not in a 3d world it hits the vertices and then the vertices average so the lighting on this area is averaging between this information for this lighting vertex and the one that's over here okay it's averaging these and so if you average how much lights hitting in these and how much outlights in these then that's what is on the surface so you get into an issue that when we get these really long kind of things like this then it's trying to average uh, light information from here down to here and inside of a game engine it's not that that's a problem, but if we're going to be casting normal, so in other words, we're we're going to try to cast, we're going to put a um, a filleted edge along this so it has a nice highlight on it, then it'll distort as it's going down because there's no lighting information to pull it in there. So what I'm going to do is go back down here, and then I'm going to go to uh, Polygon. And then I'm going to control A to pick all of them. And then we're going to use a slice plane. Now, slice plane, the way it works is it's a tool to cut. And it cuts right through something. But it only cuts through selected polygons. So if I only wanted one part of this uh, cut, I could just select that polygon. But in our case, we want everything. Uh, we want to cut all the way through it, so we select everything. Now, I need to rotate this up. And I want to turn my uh, angle snap on so that I rotate it uh, straight up. And I'm going to rotate it to a 90 degree angle. Now, so you can see this, make sure you follow this. Down here at the bottom are your X, Y, and Z angles. So as I pull this, you want to look down here and follow it on this Y axis until it gets to be 90 degrees. And then you know it's straight up. Okay, so now I can move it to where I want. So I can slide this. And I may decide, okay, I want to slide it right about here. And then you have a couple of buttons over here. And the way this works is if I click this split and then I click slice, it actually cuts it there and makes it into two separate objects. I do not want that. I don't want to, I don't want to split it. I just want to add geometry there. So when I hit slice, it added that geometry there. So I may add another one, say here. Here, they don't have to be perfectly spaced, but what that's doing is giving me more lighting information through here. Let's put another one, say, here. Here. Maybe here. And maybe one more, like, right through there. Okay. So now you can see that's giving me more lighting information in this. Now it jumped up. It was like 775 was about what it was before. And so now it's 940, but that's a minimal amount. But now I'm going to have much more lighting information hitting this so that I get a better uh, than when I do my surfacing and texturing. I'm going to get much better uh, lighting information in here. Okay. Now, this edit normals, this is really, I mean, this is really not um, what an edit normal is, but this just uh, illustrates the process, this reason I do that. And then we want to dump that back off there. We don't really want that. Okay, so um, there we go. I think that's, that's going to be our low poly model that we're going to put uh, in the scene. And so then we're going to, uh, one of the things I want to do right now is the pivot point is over here. 
I want to go ahead and just center that pivot point, effect pivot point only, center to object and now, and then be sure to turn that off and now your pivot point is in the center. And uh, there we go. That looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to make a copy of this. And I'm going to go ahead and update this. Okay, so now in uh, Max 2021, uh, if you got the update, you got to make sure you got the current update. Um, there was a third party plugin that uh, a gentleman had created, a uh, retopology uh, plugin. And now Autodesk has gone out and uh, bought that from him, and it's uh, inside of Max now. So if we go in here, we've got a new retopology plugin. And you can initially leave the settings the way they are and then just you know, go ahead and just leave them the way they are and just click compute. And then it's it's pretty good at um, retopologizing, giving you a clean retopology. Now I'm going to show you the difference with this and say, Like in my original video, we were using Quantify Mesh, which was what was in here before. Now, I have noticed, though, that sometimes, and of course, I can make this look a little bit more like that. If I lower this down, say, maybe one, and then I get these quad sizes pretty close. But you'll see that you can get some kind of funky little swirls and stuff on this Quantify Mesh that this uh, retopology is a little bit better at handling. Now, one of the things I do notice about the retopology is it's not very good at holding these edges. It kind of wants to round that, which in the end is not really a problem because all you're going to do is to come back in and you're going to put an edit uh, poly modifier on this and select your polygons and then that's just a smoothing group issue. So I'm just going to clear my smoothing group. I'm going to change this to 15 degrees and auto smooth it. And now, and then that'll fix that issue. It was just a smoothing group issue. Do notice that this has got some funky little ripples in it too. But what I have noticed is sometimes uh, this doesn't, um, this retopology tool doesn't, doesn't actually work. It sits there and it just doesn't work. And let's see if I can get it to uh, do that. Let's go back to, uh, where's my Boolean? And I'm just going to hold down my shift key. Convert this to an edible poly. Okay, let's put that read topology on this. See what we get. Okay, now you can see I'm getting some kind of odd read topology in this. Okay, and what it is is it it's having an issue with all these long polygons in here. Now, there's ways to kind of combat that. Now, I didn't have the issue here because I cut it, so it was, it was reading these as smaller quads, but it's having a problem with this one. So a quick thing that I see people uh, doing is um, actually what people do is actually come in here and put a quadify uh, mesh on it first and then put a retopology on it. So basically what they're doing is adding more geometry, which is kind of what I was doing in here, but it's just less controlled. But you'll see it didn't do anything. And 
I find this quite often that this tool just kind of wigs out sometimes, okay, and it, it can't deal with it. Now, I found a couple of different ways to deal with that. Okay, one of them is I'm going to, I'm just going to bake this, this quad mesh into this. And then what I'm going to do is to go to uh, vertices, pick all the vertices, and then I'm going to right click and go connect. And that's going to connect all those. Now they're not quads, they're triangles. And so it's going to have to reconfigure that in order to do that. So we're going to go in here and try it again. And you'll see that that kind of prompted it to be able to figure out because before it was a bunch of quads. And for some reason, I guess the way it's set to programming, it just couldn't, you know, it said, well, it's already a bunch of quads. But when I uh, made it into all triangles, then it recalculated it. Another little uh, thing that you can do, which is a little dance. You know, any anything that you know, when we're in this digital world is it does funky things is if I lower this down, say, to maybe two. Actually, let's just go to one. OK, and then let's try the retopology. then it worked so that both of those are just little techniques that I've found experimenting trying to uh, figure out how to uh, actually get this piece get this retopology to work because it doesn't just work all the time you know it's not like it's a magic button in which that I could take any piece of geometry and I just slap it on I mean I know they kind of advertise it that way but I've, I've found all kinds of little uh, funky little things that occurs with it but you'll see that really and let's I'm gonna make a copy of this one over here so we can see all three of these together so these actually were all done with three different techniques and they're they're all a little bit different Okay, you can see the flow of this geometry and this. They're all a little different, but all of these are really clean. You know, these are really clean models. And actually, it's kind of like this one was the best one. If you look at the f how straight those polygons are there. These kind of have a little waver in it. These have a little waver in it. But all of these are good. So now you can ask yourself, okay, so why are we doing quads? Okay. Well, there's several reasons that you do quads. One of the reasons is uh, a mechanical thing like this. You might want to come in here and have dings and stuff in it. Okay, so what people do is they import their things into a sculpting package like ZBrush or Mudbox or a soft, uh, one of the more of a sculpting softwares, and then they can come in here and do dings on things. But those things need to be um, quads, though, because those are programs worked on quads, so they need to be that. In our particular instance, we're going to do two things. One thing is is we're going to we want to put a nice uh, filleted edge around this to catch a nice highlight that we're going to uh, cast a normal back onto our piece. And the other thing is, is because we're going to be using uh, a, a method of doing vertex painting to do texturing, which is a very fast process. Most people only know the process where you take something and you unwrap it and then you paint it and you put it back on, which is a very slow process. Vertex painting is a very fast process. Now, there's some new softwares out there, uh, Substance Painter that people are really using quite a bit, and Substance Designer. I've heard some horror stories from people out in the industry uh, that are interviewing people, though, that use those softwares because what they're doing is using pre-built pre uh, textures from people. So, you know, you can actually go out there and buy pre-made textures, and then they use them on their models, 
and then their you know portfolio looks really good, and then you go in for an interview, and the first thing that's going to happen in those interviews is when you get to a point they think they might hire you, is they're going to give you a test. And they're not going to let you use any pre-made textures in there. And then what happens is, is the person goes in there and then they can't texture. And I've gotten some horror stories from people I know, you know, past graduates that work at some high-end gaming companies. I won't name them, but some high-end ones that uh, are really like they're anti, you know, substance painter to a certain degree from that point. And that uh, they get a lot of people that just can't, they don't know how to, you know, surface. And so from my point uh, standpoint, you should be able to surface inside of um, Photoshop first, then, you know, utilize a Substance Painter and Substance Designer as a, a enhancing tool to what you're doing, but not as a crutch. And Substance Designer is a hybrid tool. Uh, it's, it's a procedural texture, titleable texture type of a tool. And that's what we're going to be doing in here is using those types of techniques of Substance Designer. But I'm going to show you how to do them uh, right inside of uh, Max. Okay, so that's why we're doing quads. Uh, because we're going to paint a vertex, so we need enough vertices to paint on. Okay, so hopefully that takes you through this stage of getting um, your work done as far as getting uh, your uh, widget with enough vertices and a nice uh, quad flow to it. Okay, so to sum it up, I showed you four different ways that I approached trying to take our original little uh, texturing widget and get it into a nice quad flow. First one is our original widget. Okay, then we're going to do a retopology on that. The second one here, I showed you how to put a quadify mesh on it and then leave it as default setting of four. Then selecting, you know, putting edit poly on it, selecting all the vertices and connecting those, which will give you this triangular pattern. Or I also showed you how to put a quadify mesh on it and then instead of leaving at the default of four or putting it down to one. And then the last one that uh, we were talking about is where I took the original shape, but then I came in and sliced it across there to add some more geometry to it. And so then these were the uh, outcomes after we put the retopology on it. You can see that the original one, while it's got nice quads in here, it's got some really kind of funky um, divisions in here. This one where we put the quantify mesh on and we left it at four, but then we uh, connected all the vertices, turned out really nice. And then the one where we put the quantify mesh and turned it down to one subdivision, and then read topologies turned out really nice too. And then we've got the one that we sliced the model and re topologized it, and I actually think it's the one that uh, looks the best. So, here's from the other angle. So, there's our original. Here it is when we've actually turned on the quantify with the four and then connecting the vertices. Here's the quantify with one. And then here is the original model that's sliced. And then here is once they've been subdivided. The one at the top. I wouldn't probably use that. Any of these others would work. This one, okay, where we did the original model and I took the time to manually slice it, I think turned out nice as you can see these polys really run uh, vertical through here and uh, we've got a waiver in all these others. But all three of these would work, but this one is the nicest. Now the reason I show you different ways to do these is because this, these, you know, the solution I come up for one of these, the widget, this specific widget may be different for some other object that you're going to use. So now having multiple approaches to thing is a huge benefit. Thank you very much.